Okay, what was the last topic we have discussed? Can anyone inform me what is the, what was the last topic that we have discussed? Okay, we have completed scope, nature, and business economics with other discipline. And in the last class, we have also discussed about business decision making process. Now, today, we are going to discuss about what is the role of managerial economist. What is the role of managerial economist? Role of managerial economist. Okay, this is also one of the important questions for your external examination. What will be the role of a managerial economist? Or we can also term it as business economist. Okay, now we have two names. One, it can be termed as a managerial economist, and another is business economist. Is it visible to you people? Can anyone? Yeah, scopes of B related to your discipline. Yes, okay, right. Okay. Fine. So, what is the role of business economist? See, when you have been appointed as a economist, okay, that is business economist in a company, then what will be your role? What will be your duties to be performed? Okay, what is the area which you are going to cover? That is, we are going to discuss about the role of a business economist. Someone is getting joined. Angela. Now, what will be your role as a business economist in the organization? What will be your duties in the organization? What is the area that will come under you? Okay, that we're going to discuss in this particular topic. Here. See, first of all, you should have a knowledge of economic theories okay you should have you should know about economic theories concepts laws you should aware about all these theories concepts laws and rules which are available in economics, which are available in economics and can be applied and can be applied and can be applied in business, in business to take a, to take a decisions, to take decision. So you should be aware of what all the theories and the concepts and laws and tools which can be applied in a business area to take the decisions. Then only you can fulfill your duties as a manager. And, and you should be, you, you're going to play a very vital role in a decision making. You're going to play a vital role in decision making. Okay, you're going to take a vital role in a decision making. For what? for the sustenance and for the growth of the organization. Okay, what is the, your role? You need to aware about all the theories, concepts, laws and tools which are available in economics, which will be helpful to take a decision. What are the decisions? That decisions are very vital for the company, for the firm, for its sustenance or for its growth. And then, decision as well as company grow gawal ante kuda a decision chala awesome but a decision is called ante me like raymond ali you should be knowledgeable of what all the economic theories concepts laws and tools here okay so now what will be your roles you the main majority the main part 
or we will say the main area of your focus will be decision making. You will be of decision making. Okay, what type of decision you will take? You will take many decisions. Prior to that, you will analyze the things. You will analyze and you will evaluate and you will consider. Then you will take your decisions. You analyze the things, you evaluate and you consider, then you will take your decisions. In what area you will take a decision? The first thing, what to produce? What to produce? What to produce? Okay. The second thing, why? Because example in a company, there might be many products that you're going to produce. You might be producing A product, B product, C product, D product. Now you need to make a decision whether should I produce A or B or C or D or should I produce all these products or should I give some preferences to A or B or C or D? What should be my preferences? Is it really? Why? Because whenever you are allocating the resources, you try to allocate resources in such a way where you can get benefited, where you can maximize your profits. Is it clear? In such a way, you would like to allocate your resources. Allocate your resources. So you need to find out what is the product or what is the product which is more profitable for the company. So for that, you need to analyze, you need to evaluate, and you need to consider. Accordingly, you will take the decision to produce that product. So your decision will be what? What to produce. Okay. What to produce. The second thing is that how much to be produced. How much to be produced. Okay. You need to take, you need to analyze the things, and you need to identify what is the optimum unit that you need to produce here optimum unit that you need to produce because if you produce less then also it will be cost high it will cost high if you produce more then also it will cost you high okay there is a a point a midpoint we will call we call as an a midpoint where we will call it point as an equilibrium point equilibrium point you need not to produce less nor high you need to produce only such level of output where you can enjoy the benefits optimally. Okay, where you can enjoy the benefits optimally. So you need to identify what, how much to be produced here. The first thing is that what product to be produced. The second thing is that how much to be produced. Whether I should produce 10,000, 20,000 or 50,000. What is better for me? Okay. For taking this decision, you need to consider many factors. You need to see what is the demand for your product. You need to see what should, what is the relationship between the cost and output. Okay, cost and output. What is the relationship I have? Right. So accordingly, what you will take, you will take a decision. What should be the output level, which uh, which will decreases my total cost, which will decreases my total cost here. What will happen when you come in a third unit where we will discuss about a production loss. In a production loss, we will try to find out what is the cost output relationship. In a cost output relationship, what will happen if you produce less, nah, then also it will cost you high. If you produce more, nah, then also you will see there will be, it will cost you high. If there is a certain point where the production cost will be minimum, this will be the graph, we will call it curve. Okay, now this is the curve, SSC curve will be there where you can identify what is the optimal output can be produced where the cost will be minimum. So this type of decisions that you're going to learn in the third unit in a production loss, where you will see cost output relationship. Okay, cost output relationship in short run. In the same way, you also try to identify and try to learn a cost output relationship in the long run. In third unit, we will discuss that. You get to know how we will make a decision to produce uh, the optimal quantity by which the cost can be reduced here. So you will take a decision how much to be produced. The third thing is that when to produce. When to produce. Okay, year long you will, you're not going to produce the products, fine. So you need to determine that you need to find out, you need to forecast the demand. 
you need to forecast the demand and you need to understand the business cycles okay you need to understand the business cycle and accordingly what you will see what will be the best time to produce is it clear all 365 days it may not be peak period for you it may not be peak period for you there are certain days where the production cost will be very minimum is it clear and demand will also be okay we will call it an average demand will be. so you will make the decision when to be produced by considering many factors like uh, what is the peak period i have okay and at what time the raw material cost will be minimum and how much time it will take to uh, what do you call um, make available the product to the customer example if you are producing today if you are producing today customer it will take minimum 15 to 20 days to reach to the customer immediately you cannot produce and send it to the customer it required certain time period after your production it will take minimum 20 days i am taking an example here it might be a 10 days also it might be a one month also it might be a three months also okay it depend upon the product it depend upon the supply chain what the company have so let me take an average here so accordingly you will see that what is the lead time it, it is taking if i produce a product what will be the time at which the customer will be getting our product so accordingly you will produce a product for example okay if you see today if i am producing then how much time it will take to reach to the customer what will be the time when my product will be reaching to the customer whether if it is 15 days then i need to plan accordingly when to be produced so that at a particular day my product should be available to the customer there should not be what you call stock out there should not be a stock out in the market for my product if it is a stock out in the market for my product what will happen my customers will be turned to competitors they will turn to competitors is it clear then what will happen there is a chance that the customer may not get back to my product in future that's why i should see that my product should not be stock out then i need to plan myself that every time my product should be available in the market so customer should not return back without getting my product due to stock out so for that what i need to do i need to have a proper planning a strategic planning by which i can supply the goods into the market at the right time so this is also one of the important decision you you need to take as a business economist next we have a allocation of a scarce resource allocation of scarce resources okay whatever the resources you have okay whatever the resources you have those are scarce resources we call fine those resources are scarce resources scarce resources so what you need to do you need to allocate here you need to allocate allocate the resources so that the overall benefit that what you are going to derive from this allocation should be maximum should be optimal you got my point so one of the important role that you are going to play that is you need to take a, you need to allocate the scarce resources what you have because once you have allocated you cannot divert it you cannot shift it or you cannot swap it so it will be very difficult for you so before allocating you need to analyze the things in a proper way and accordingly okay accordingly what you need to do you need to take a decision so that the overall benefit that you are going to derive from this allocation should be maximum so this is one thing that you going to do and next to you need to analyze the impact analyze the impact of macro economic factors macro economic factors okay you need to analyze so there might be many what do you call macro economic factors will be there which will be affecting your firm if example this is your firm there are many factors will be there which will be affecting your 
from here. So you need to analyze all these factors. The one, it can be inflation. It can be interest rate. It can be government policies. It can be a GDP or GNP or national, what you call uh, uh, national income, or it can be a per capita income. It can be a advancement in the technologies. It can be a competitors in the market. One more point. So all these factors you need to consider before taking a decision in the company before taking a decision in the company. So what will be your duty there? Your duty will be analyzing the impact of the macroeconomic factor. Example, you have made certain assumptions and you have decided and you have made a decision. You have made a decision, but in interim period, in interim period, in mid of the term, what happened? Government had changed certain policies. Government had made certain policies then what will be your duty whatever the change which has been came okay whatever the change which has been implemented by the government which is newly introduced by the government what will be the impact of that change on the firm you need to identify you got my point you got my point so here just give me a one minute So here, what we are trying to uh, um, analyze here, we are trying to analyze if there is a change of the government policy, okay, in mid of the year, in mid of the year, then we need to see what is the impact of that change or that implementation of the firm. That is your duty. You need to analyze what will be the impact of this new government policy on the firm. Or if example, there is a suddenly there is a hike in inflation or there is a rise in inflation which has been identified recently due to some what you call uh, unexpected what you call circumstances then you need to identify what will be the impact on the firm here if example there is a we will call it as an, a natural disaster or like example earthquake or it might be due to we will call uh, heavy rains or it might be due to any floods, is it clear? So there might be uh, the, the natural, we will call calamities. What will be the impact of, of these natural calamities on the firm? You need to identify that, you need to analyze that because you need to make certain adjustments here. Whatever you have planned previously, that will be on certain assumptions. That will be on certain assumptions. And you have planned it and you are trying to implement it. But in mid of that, there will be certain changes might be taken place. So you need to analyze that and you need to identify what is the impact on the firm here. Right now, we have a very important, we, we are going through that is COVID-19. Okay, it has impacted many firms in different ways. So the economists, what we do, do, they will try to find out what will be the impact of COVID-19 on the firm and the firm's performance. Accordingly, they will make certain adjustments. Here. They will try to make certain adjustments. Here. So one of the duty will be what? Analyzing the impact of the macroeconomic elements on business here. The next will be what? Estimation of a demand. Okay, estimation of demand. You need to estimate what, what is the demand for your product at a national level, at an international level, at a local level. What is your demand for your product? Is that clear? What is the demand for your product? And apart from that, you also should analyze the demand also. You need to analyze the demand also. If example, if I have increased the price by 10%, what will be the impact on demand? Whether it will be decreases or increases or it will remain constant. If example, if I have decreased uh, the demand price by five by five ten percent or fifteen percent, then what will be impact on my demand? Whether it will increases or decreases or it will remain constant. Okay, so you need to analyze here, and you need to see that what is the elasticity. Okay, what is the elasticity of demand due to change in price or due to change in what you call income due to change in government uh, policies? You need to see the what is the elasticity of demand. 
how does it respond and apart from that you should also estimate your demand here by using different tools you need to use different statistical tools by which you need to estimate the demand for your product in the future course accordingly you can plan your production if example if i have estimated that next year my demand is next year my demand is 10000 then accordingly what i will do i will source the finance for the 10000 i will purchase the raw material for 10000 i will see whether the human source is it available to produce 10000 or not even my plant size what i have whether it is capable of producing 10000 units or not i will see whether all other sources machineries is available or equipments are available or source is available to produce this 10000 units or not so when i have estimated the demand by using statistical tool or non statistical tool then what you need to do you need to make all these arrangements in due to, for that what we do we will estimate the demand for your product and you will analyze your demand here so that is one of the important area where you need to focus here so there are many statistical and non statistical tools are there to estimate the demand like we have a least square method is there we have a uh, least square method is there moving average method is there or we have a trend line method is there okay or we have a in non statistical method like sample method is there or we have a census method is there okay judgmental method is there and we have expert opinion method is there fine and here we can say uh, exponential smoothing method is there exponential smoothing method is there okay and there are many other methods which are statistical and non statistical methods are there is it clear? so by using this method we will try to find out the demand why we will find out the demand because we need to make arrangements here for that reason we will try to estimate the demand and we also analyze the demand here what will be the impact of the price on the demand what will be the impact of income on the demand what will be the impact of advertisement on the demand all these also we will try to find it out and we will see that what will be the impact on the demand eh? analyzing the demand report. okay then next uh, the seventh one we will see that we need to analyze the competition analyze the competition or we will call it as in a market structure we will call it. okay we need to see that what is the competition in the market okay what is the competition in the market whether there are many competitors are there or few competitors are there or no competitors are there because accordingly you need to make the decisions here if there are no competitors the decision will be different if there are few competitors then the decision will be different if there are many competitors then the decision will be different here so you need to analyze the competition here competitors here and their moves also you need to see how they are what are their strategies so that you should also plan yourself okay you need to meet the customer needs you need to fulfill the customer needs and apart from that you should also have a overhand you are on your competitors then only you can succeed okay then only you can succeed you need to find out what are the strategic moves of your competitors then only you can make a proper decision and you can be a champ in the market here okay you can say you can be a market leader in the the next area what will be your focus that is we will call price fixation you need to fix the price okay you need to identify what should be the price for our product example if you want to sell 10,000 units per year then you need to determine what should be the price you need to determine what should be the price okay because your target is that you want to sell 10,000 units to sell the 10,000 unit what should be the price of the product if like if you have decided the price that I want to sell the product for rupees 10 only, then you need to determine what quantity can I sell. Then you need to determine what quantity can I sell. Is it clear? Whether you need to first make your mind whether whether you want to sell how many units, then you need to determine, determine the price. Or if you have fixed the price that no, I want to sell for rupees 10, then you need to determine the quantity here. 
And apart from that, you need to analyze the cost. What is the cost you have incurred in producing the product? What is the cost you have incurred in producing the product? So that you can fix the price. You can fix the price. By fixing the price, what you will do, you will see that what is my required rate of return? What is my expected required rate of return? Or we will call what is my required rate of return? If example, if I have invested 100 rupees, if my required rate, and rate of return is 10%, then on each 100 rupees, on every 100 rupees, I should get minimum 10 rupees. If example, to producing a product, if I have invested 200 rupees, then my profit should be 20, then my, pro my product of price should be 220 rupees. You got my point? So it depends upon what is your required rate of return. So you will fix the price here. There are many methods are there of fixing the price. Like sometimes we fix the price like cost plus pricing. Again, we will discuss all these concepts in detail manner later on. Cost plus, we will call it cost plus pricing. Like example, if it is the cost is 100, then I want 10 rupees on each product. 110 will be my price. Or sometime I will be what? I will be moving, okay, moving, what do you call market uh, moving price? Like example, in market, every, my competitors are selling for 102 rupees, then I am also going to sell at 102 rupees. Sometime you will come up with a penetration pricing. Okay, penetration pricing policy. In penetration pricing policy, what you will do? In skimming price policy, in skimming policy, initially you will charge minimum, okay, 100. Then later on, as time will pass on, you what you will do? You will go on increasing the price. Okay, that we will call as an, a penetration pricing method or in a skimming pricing method, what you will do initially you charge high, then what later on what you will do, you go on decreasing the price. Is it? Clear? This is how the price of fixation policy will be depend upon various factors. You need to consider the market, the competitors, the competition, the market structure, the cost, what you have involved, the expected rate of return. Accordingly, you will come up with a strategy what will be benefit for your product. Like, and also it depends upon your PLC, product life cycle also, in which stage your product is right now because as how human beings have a life cycle in the same way the product will also go with the same life cycle like we are infant then we will become young okay uh, then we will become old okay there are many stages that like in a human in the same way in products also there will be a certain stages will be there like we will have an introduction stage will be there okay growth stage will be there maturity stage is it visible to you people Uh, introduction will be there, growth stage will be there, maturity stage will be there, in the same way decline stage will be there. Is it clear? So there are different stages will be there. So you need to see in which stage you are, in which stage the product is there, whether it is an introduction stage, then the pricing policy will be different. If it is at a growth stage, the pricing strategy will be different. If it is at a maturity stage, the pricing policy will be different. And as well as if it is in a decline state, the pricing will be different. And each and every state, the pricing policy, policy might be changes in. You got my point. So that's where you need to, whenever you're fixing the price, you need to consider all these factors and determine what is the quantity you want to produce or uh, what is the price you want to fix. Is it clear? So accordingly, you will fix the price. And the next is, and the next one, it is about preparing a development plans. Okay, you need to make a proper development plans here. Okay, development plans and development plans for business. Okay, so how we can develop our organization? Okay, what are the factors where we need to focus? As I said you that uh, business economics is a normative science. It will also suggest you. Okay, it will also suggest you how we can achieve, how we can achieve the, how we can achieve the goal. Okay, how we can achieve the goal here. Is it clear? So, as I said with that, what should we do? 
it will suggest you it will assist you it will direct you and how it can be achieved it will direct you so that's why we it will help you business economist to what it need to do it need to come up with a development plans here it need to come up with a development plans here so that it can increases what do you call business in the business can be grow here fine okay one minute so here what in a development plans your duty will be what as a business economist in to provide a development plans for the organization so what should organizing organization should do or should perform so that it can grow okay or to sustain is it clear what are the product to be produced what price should be fixed how to do the marketing how to increase the demand all these decisions what you need to help the organization assist the organization so that it can develop in, in the market okay next to you should also conduct economic review of the business plans and whatever the business plans okay whatever the business plans okay which has been formulated by the policy which has been formulated by the what you call directors okay or the top management you need to you need to review you need to review those economic plans you need to tell them what will be the economic impact on the company is it clear and what will be the benefit that you are going to get with those plans is it clear so whatever the business plans which has been formulated by the directors or the top management you need to review all those plans here and you need to tell them that how does it is going to be impact and what are the what you call um, implications can be there on your form and what can be the benefits that you can derive from these plans here and what will be the uh, economic impact will be there on the company all these things you need to inform to the business management and next is what you need to brief the management on current issues and challenges next is what you need to provide uh, brief the management okay you need to brief the management on current issues okay on current issues and current issues and current issues and challenges at national and international level both okay the next will be what you need to give them a brief evaluation about the investment plans you need to evaluate about the investment plans okay we need to brief about the investment plans okay just give me a one minute here any fear issues 